This is a short bite episode of Homeschool Together. Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together Short Bite Edition. We have a great little game from Haba today called mm-hmm. Barnyard Bunch. So if you're got a kind of like what four to ninety nine, so we're looking for a really <laughs> wide range of, of learners here today. I think yeah, definitely kind of pre K. I'd say this is probably best for maybe pre K to early elementary. You might yeah. tap out at maybe second grade. I don't know. That's just my thought. A, gr- a great game, that, like if you have like a student, maybe a nice one to play with two kids. You know, if you have a younger learner as well. You know what I love about Haba games in general yeah. is that they make games that are so freaking adorable yeah. that I don't mind playing them as an adult, no matter how simple the gameplay is and mm-hmm. you know or, or what the it's the theme is always so stinking cute i just don't mind playing um and you know it's got a cool mechanic so in this one barnyard bunch this is a cooperative game uh basically you've got a little hexagonal barnyard it's yeah, a, it, no it's it's an oct- octagonal octagonal I think there's eight. space yeah. yeah and so you've got colors all the way around there in different spaces and then there's a barn in the middle and on each one of those little colored spaces I think there's four colors. Um, you have a little wooden meeple of a frog, a sheep, a cow, a horse. It's all these different animals. And then coming out from each one of those, like... Kind of like a star pattern. Yeah, yeah or like wheel spokes, is uh, a series of colored spaces beyond that. So maybe the horse starts on a red space, and then it goes green, blue, yellow, red. You know, there's it's mm-hmm. alternating colors. Um, and that goes out in all directions. And your goal is to keep all the animals on the farm so if any one of them gets off their track then you all lose together Mm -hmm. so in the game you're going to roll a die and whatever color you roll any animal that's standing on that color is going to move forward a space Mm -hmm. Um, and if you roll the farmer you can choose an animal to go back a space if you roll lily the sheepdog then you get to choose an animal that goes all the way back to the barn so that's kind of your first mechanic to get them to that they're going to they're going to move in the wrong direction mm-hmm. or you know possibly you can move them back if you get the farmer or or the sheepdog. And then the second action you're going to take on your turn is to draw a card. The card is going to have either an animal in which case they are going to move forward a space or it's going to have the thing that lures them back. So there's a fly and that lures back the frog and the frog would then go back a space. Again, you can get the farmer and you can get the sheepdog for the same actions that they take when they're dice. So there's some strategy here in well, which ones do you send forward back? You know, it, it's cooperative as well, which mm-hmm. is something we always like. You know, it takes away a little bit of that competitive nature. You know, I beat you, you beat me type of thing, especially with the earlier learners. Be a nice skill to have. Also, really high quality pieces as well. Yeah, well, you know, Hoppus always they're they're good for having you know wooden components mm-hmm. and nice thick cardboard pieces, and this yeah. is just no exception. That's that's always really really good quality and rules that are very well explained. Mm-hmm. Like they cover all the bases. I really yeah. appreciate that <laughs> because there's no like, wait a minute, what happens if? It's like no, it's all very <laughs> clearly put out and. One thing that they do too is they they always talk about how you should talk with your child mm-hmm. about. So this is this is obviously working on color recognition. Um, this is working on planning ahead. So okay, yeah, you know, let's say that I have um, three animals that are already on blue, and I need to decide which animal to send back. And one of my animals is the next to move on to blue. I mean, maybe. I don't want to do that. Or Mm -hmm. maybe I want to move one of the other blues back or maybe the farthest animal. So you got to talk amongst yourselves and come up with the best strategy. And and your early learner may not be understanding the the game theory. And if you're able to talk them through on, you know, what what you're thinking, they they begin to understand, you know, more the nuanced dynamics of being able to see the probability and, you know, what is the next logical play or what is the next possible play or what are we trying to do? What are we trying to avoid? That's having that conversation is really kind of a nice learning experience for the the learner, you know, making their critical thinking skills a little bit more complex, a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more subtle and seeing and playing out the game. You know, we always think like games like chess and things of that nature where you're thinking ahead. You know, these are great skills to have and embedded even in a small game like this. You start to see that. And I think the cooperative nature is one of the ways to do that. Yeah, I love cooperative. It's a great way to model 
you know, losing with grace, <laughs> right? It's really hard for kids this age. At, at some point when they're really little, they just want to play and they mm-hmm. don't care if they lose. And then, but at some point, it seems they kind of hit, and our, our daughter started to hit this stage where it really bothers her if she doesn't win the game. Mm-hmm. And so we, I heard somewhere in, in some group, and I'm not sure where I heard it, but that the winner had to clean up the game. And so we've, <laughs> we've, we've started enacting this. And then she kind of feels like, ha ha, you won. You got to clean up, you know? <laughs> so it actually kind of worked out, but. Now she's taking on purpose. <laughs> yeah, no, no, she, she would still rather win. <laughs> but one of the things that cooperative games just kind of takes that element away. We're all mm-hmm. on the same team. And if we lose, then the first thing that I say is, oh my gosh, I had so much fun playing this game with you. Let's play it again. Rather mm. than, you know, being like, oh, I can't believe we, because she's like, oh no, we lost. They got away. And she gets all <laughs> bummed out. And I'm like, yeah, but that was so much fun. Do you want to play again? And she and she's like, oh, okay. So she's, she. We're, I'm trying to model for her the right way because, yeah. you know, I, I mean, this is my game life. Right? I lose a lot of the games we play together, and <laughs> I need to be. I, I, listen, you're the strategist, and I, I lose a lot of the games. But you know, I have so much fun playing that I'm the first one to say, "Let's do that again." Yeah. Um, which is the mark of a good game. And every time this one comes out, I, I'm always like, "Yeah, I'm always down to play it." The little meeples are just they're so adorable. They are very cute. The little, I mean, animal the little pig and the little dog. It was it the little the pig and the cat and the horsey. Oh the yeah, they're super cute, sheep. and I've seen them. I've seen the kids playing with them too. So, yeah. yeah, it's it's cute. It's cooperative. It teaches some good. It's a skills. short game too, five to about fifteen minutes, somewhere in that range. Yeah, yeah, it's really short. So the game ends when you've um, you've used up the whole deck and you haven't lost any animals. Yeah. So that's the. It's really just like trying to survive. <laughs> <laughs> you're just trying to survive until the deck's gone right i kind of feel like that's we were talking earlier kind of castle panicky yeah you know before the show where you're just trying to survive if you can just you know get the last monster you win it doesn't matter if you only have one bit of a wall standing you win <laughs> exactly <laughs> so um i think it's kind of this is just the this is the earliest version of that for them to start to understand yeah you know thinking about not just where one animal is, but the whole board. M- managing multiple pieces, right. I think, you know, it, you can think of it as maybe like a poor version of, you know, poor analogy, but it'd be like a sorry type of thing where you have multiple pieces out on the board and you're moving them and you're trying to get them around and, and get them to the home place. Like with Castle Panic, you said, where you're managing all your resources, especially with cards and characters, and then you have these impending characters that are coming down and trying to take your castle it's kind of like that reverse of that where you're trying to keep everything close to you <laughs> right but you know still it's that it's a similar dynamic and a similar way of thinking and i you know it's just creating that multi-dimensional thinking where yeah. you're thinking about multiple characters at one time it's not just one linear character moving around mm-hmm. like something in labyrinth or something of those you know where you just have one meeple and it's your meeple um, you're thinking about multiple meeples, and I think that just adds a little bit more sophisticated nature. Even though, you know, Taba, it's an early learner game. It's a four-year-old game. Easy four-year-old can play this. But you can see the but the you can see the gears. You can there. see the gears starting to yeah, run. Yeah, where their I head. have to pay attention to eight different animals and where they're exactly. at, and make some some decisions. I like that the decisions are. Uh, there's, it's not all decision based. Yeah. So, I mean, there is some of it where, you know, that's the card you drew or the, the role that you had. And so that's what you got to do. There's just enough decisions for it not to, not to be like analysis paralysis with our learner. Um, but give her a little bit of strategic choice. Well, and also like, you know, when you're still, when you're playing the first few times, you you might be making a lot of the decisions of the game right. and asking your learner to make those moves. But towards the end of that first game or maybe that second game, you can start asking your learner, hey, what do you think we should do? Oh, I don't know. Well, this one's this far. What about this one? You're like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, let's do this one, Daddy. Okay. Right. And that might not be the most perfect play, but you kind of let them make that decision and mm-hmm. then you move forward. It's a great way to kind of get them you know, into the thinking and allowing them to dr- draw out their own thinking mm-hmm. through the gameplay. Right. Know? It's interesting. When we first played this, she was like, she just wanted to send the kitty home. <laughs> she just didn't want to lose the kitty. If we didn't lose the kitty, we, we were we had won, right? And uh, so we kind of started talking about risk. What's yeah. the risk on each of the different animals? And she started evaluating and counting. Oh, okay. This one's three spaces from the end. Exactly. This one's only one space from the end. The risk 
is higher with this one. And so, you know, she's was starting to kind of understand that. I I just love I love these games that are uh engaging for kids her age. You know, we could try to level her up and play something that's, you know, kind of out of her league to get her like somewhere. a castle panicky type right, of thing. Right, we could yeah. try to do that and it would be too much. Yeah. I'd rather play this and where she's learning this concept. It's totally at her level. And it's something that we enjoy playing because it's so cute. It is. That I don't, I never mind playing this game. So I think that that's a real balance to strike, right? Something that's yeah, exactly. right for kids and that parent, and, and little kids too, right? Children's games can be super fun. Family, you know, kind of, you know, family children's games, really, really fun. But games that can pl- you can play with a preschooler mm-hmm. that are really fun, I mean, I don't think that list is super large and Haba always does a good job of that. And so I appreciate yeah. that. The other games that we have from them, you know, I've, I've been really fun. We've got animal upon animal and even unicorn glitter luck cloud crystals. <laughs> as long as you don't step on one, like they're really on great. <laughs> it's so, it's so cute that I don't, I don't mind even playing that one yeah. either. So um, I think that that's a, you know, it's, it's a hard balance to make, but they do a good job of it. So Haba barnyard bunch. Yep. So in all, don't lose the kitty. Yeah, don't lose the kitty. So we uh, thank Haba for sending this to us. Yeah. Uh, just in full disclosure, they did send it to us, but our reviews are our own, oh, yes, and we really are. did enjoy it. Yes, we really did. Oh, and Justin Lee designed the game. Oh, yes, that's right. We're being more intentional about listing the game designers. And so we, Yeah, we appreciate Haba for putting the, the game creator on there. So it's On nice. the cover, yeah. After talking with Kim Vandenbroek, we're trying to be more intentional about acknowledging the the game designer and Haba obviously uh, I think so yes Justin yep, they put it right on the cover so good job acknowledging Justin. it good too. job Justin and good job Haba for hiring Justin to make this game <laughs> <laughs> good job for me hiring you to be my co-host well, you're, you're just Mr. Optimism <laughs> I know good I, lo- job I love all this gratitude good job to the dog yeah I, I'm I, I hired the dog to keep the, my feet warm on my bed <laughs> I'm just a genius <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time. Happy homeschooling!